The AGM One Shot Zero feature allows you to zero in your thermal scope really quickly. So what you do is you take a shot at a target and then you aim at that bullseye again and you can freeze frame that image and from there you can manually reposition the reticle to the exact place you struck the target so it's not as automatic as it sounds at first but it's a really great feature uh makes zeroing in a lot faster so let me show you exactly how to do it all right guys so i'm doing this in my studio just because i can illustrate this better i'm not actually going to be firing any rounds obviously but you're going to have this mounted to your rifle you'll be out in the range now paper targets are hard to see on thermal uh but they do make specialty thermal targets that provide high contrast for indoors and outdoors which i'll link to below um, but you can do other things like use thermal tape or um, hand warmers you can get creative and think of different ways you can create some heat contrast for your target so to zero in your scope you're going to hold down the middle button right here until the menu pops up and then you're going to toggle down to the reticle menu now it's not the zeroing profiles i'm going to get into this later in the video if you want to learn what those are you want to go to reticle and by the way if you don't see some of these settings make sure you have the latest firmware i have a video on how to do that uh, which i'll link to below as well so go ahead and hit the middle button here to select reticle i'm going to skip all of these settings right now we're going to go over these later in the video but just go right down to the freeze option and you're going to go ahead and line up your shot. So I've got this uh, little dot on my wall. We're going to pretend is a target. So you're going to line up your shot right at the bullseye and then take your shot. All right. So we're going to pretend that this bottom right hand corner dot right here is where my shot landed. So what you need to do is line up the bullseye once again with your finger over the middle button because that's going to freeze the frame. So line up your shot again right over the bullseye and you're gonna tap that button. Now, if you didn't quite get it, you can go ahead and tap the button again and try to line up a better shot. All right, so once you've frozen the frame, you can now you know, move your rifle around. It doesn't matter. You just wanna tap this down button to go to the, uh, the X and Y. If you look over here at the inset here, um, we can get down to the X, Y adjustment. So that's your windage and elevation adjustment. And so we're gonna hit the middle button to uh, select that. And then we're gonna use these four, these four buttons uh, to adjust our reticle. So the left and right is going to adjust the X axis and the up and down will adjust the Y axis. So we just wanna move the reticle over to where our shot landed. Now, if you hold down the button like I'm doing right now, it'll jump uh, 10 uh, increments at a time. And so you wanna just move the target right over where your shot landed. So you'll notice that uh, there's a little crosshair that remains uh, back at the origin where you originally aimed. Now, when you're done, you can hit the middle button again. Um, there's also a zoom feature. So if you go up to the zoom, you can uh, toggle that if you want to get a, a tighter uh, view of, of your target. And then what you're going to do is go back to freeze and hit the middle button again. So that'll unfreeze your, your frame. Now, at this point, you know, you would still want to take a few more shots and see how close you are um, and keep adjusting as necessary. This is obviously an exaggerated example. You know, it wouldn't be that far off. But once you're happy with your reticle placement, just hold down the middle button and it'll ask if you want to save the parameters. Go over to OK and hit the middle button again. So now the reticle is zeroed in to this profile and this reticle. So let's back up a little bit and talk about zeroing profiles. I kind of wish they were called like rifle profiles because uh, you basically get five different um, profiles that you can configure several reticles and several zeroing um, configurations. So you have A, B, C, D, and E. So think of it as like five different rifles that you can zero this in on, uh, especially coupled with the quick connect system. You can pop this on and off uh, different rifles really easily. So right now we're on zero 
zeroing profile A. And notice in the top right corner of the screen, it shows you A150 meters. So A uh, stands for that zeroing profile. And if we go down to reticle again and select that, this first option here called zeroing is one of five different zeroing uh, settings that are saved in the A profile. So right now we're on number two. Notice in the top right corner, it says A2. And then we have A3, A4, and A5. Now with each reticle, and you can uh, turn the reticle off if you want as well. So with each saved reticle, you can save uh, some text to uh, indicate to you, you know, which distance you zeroed this reticle in at. So uh, you can type in whatever you want here. This isn't like an automatic thing. This is just something that you save to the reticle. That way in the top right corner, you can quickly read and uh, remember, you know, which distance this was zeroed in at. So um, you can just tap the middle button and kind of toggle up and down to type in a distance in meters. I'm pretty sure you can change the units here um, in the other setting to yards if you want. Yeah, so right in the settings here, you can change the unit to meters or yards. So again, this is just like a text readout on the screen to help you remember uh, what distance this reticle was configured at. So then the middle button will back out, it'll go through each digit and then back out of that setting. And then we'll go down to type. Actually, let me, let me go to a different zeroing profile that's not off to the side here. So we got a reticle that's centered here. Okay. So there's several different reticles that you can choose from. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. And you can also choose from white, green, red, or black for the color. Next, we have zoom. So you can actually save the zoom setting to the reticle. Now, of course, you can always bypass this. Um, at any point if you want to manually. So the zoom options are gonna depend on which model you have. This is the TS-19, so it has 2.5, 5X, 10X, and 20X. So you can uh, set the default zoom that is configured with this reticle. But again, you can always bypass that by hitting this button while you're using the scope and just kind of uh, go to whatever zoom you'd like. And that's basically it. So we'll hold down the button We'll back out of this. So again, you have five different profiles that you can save. And within each profile, you can configure five reticles. So you really have a ton of uh, options for saving different reticles to your scope. And again, on the fly, you can just tap this zoom button right here to change the zoom. You can see in the top right corner here tells you uh, what magnification you're at. These magnifications are going to depend on the model uh, scope that you have, but you can also hold down this button here to uh, pass through your different uh, reticles. So right now we're in the A profile and we have five different reticles that we've saved here. So just by holding this down, you can quickly toggle through all those uh, reticles that you've saved, including turning the reticle off if you want to. So you have quick access to all of those reticles that you've programmed. All right, guys, so that's how you zero in your AGM thermal scope. This is gonna work on pretty much all of their different scope models, the Adder, the Rattler, uh, and the Varmint series, uh, very similar throughout all of those. If you wanna check out any of these scopes, I'll have links in the description below. And if you wanna see more of my AGM thermal videos, I've got a playlist that I'll link to below as well. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.